Paul Joyce tweeted today about Neville and his misinterpretation of Liverpool offering the job to Alonso or anybody else before slot. But I want to go a little bit further because I don't think Gary Neville is being honest. So Gary Neville yesterday put out on his Gary Neville podcast, I think it was, I still have Arsenal winning the title. Now, here's what I don't understand. What makes him feel that? Because if you look at Arsenal, before the season, no problem with anybody saying they think Arsenal can go head-to-head with City or maybe Arsenal will be able to just push out City. Before they can see that, it feels to me like he just doesn't want to admit that he's wrong. Or maybe it's more than that. Gary Neville these days doesn't so much feel like a football pundit as a content creator. And it feels like he just has so many different irons in the fire that he just continuously goes in this loop of talking bollocks. And he is. Like, let's be honest about this. How on earth can anybody, with what we've seen this season, feel that Arsenal are the favourites? Now, nobody's saying Arsenal won't be there or thereabouts. But to still be digging that hole, saying Arsenal are the favourites? Based off what? Based off what exactly? Couldn't beat us at their gaff. We're beaten again. I've dropped points. If this weekend it could go tits up for them completely because they're playing Chelsea. Not an easy game. If they drew that and we beat Villa, that's a te- that's a, sorry, that'll be a nine point gap already. I just don't understand. It feels like it's bait and it feels like it feels weird. Because why is he so complimentary and up Arsenal's arse? Like the whole thing just feels contrived and insincere to me Gary said man you will finish above us Gary's a clown he is and you know what not just that it's like some of his takes have been even questionable like Liverpool's midfield is clearly worse than United's based off what based off what you know I just feel like he is now becoming a figure of derision rather than a really good pundit I wish he'd just drop all this extra money-making shit that he has because I miss the old days of Neville and Carragher on Monday Night Football just being good at what they do, you know, because they were really good at what they did. I want to just get back to that, not this baiting crap trying to make content. Like, it's just, it feels like, I don't know, it feels like Sky are trying to blur the lines between you know professional media punditry and youtube stuff it just all feels a bit weird sky sports should be rebranded to sky sports amarin oh mate i'm already getting a pain in my hoop charlie with with it every day i said to you the other day i went on to sky and there was 21 different um stories or clips about ruben amarin and look i get it united's a big story but it's getting a bit cringy at this point um yeah it's weird they did it that they do it all the time because look sky gets click or excuse me united gets clicks i get it i'll never get surprised at seeing how united centric sky are and i really feel that they are go they go over the top in their coverage uh joseph said i'm okay with neville being a pundit naturally there's going to be some bias there but for god's sake get him off our games i i could live with that joseph because i really you know i've been critical of gary neville quite a bit but i agree he can be a very very good pundit he just needs to... It just feels like every time I turn around, I'm being met with a Gary Neville podcast, an Overlap podcast, a Gary Neville soundbite. It just feels like we can't get away from him. That's probably fine for most fan bases, but for us, it feels like he's gone out of his way to be underhanded in everything. Like, how can Sky sit... Do you know what, actually? I want to speak about something else in a second, but how can they sit there and have him call in our players cheaters? Like, how, where's the lack of bias in that? Or talking about simulation. And he doesn't do it elsewhere. Nowhere near as much. And do you know what got me the other day? There was an incident in... Which game was it? I think it was the United penalty. I might be wrong. But I think it was the United penalty. And they brought Mike Dean in. And initially he said... Um, I'm not sure. Now, if it wasn't the United penalty, it was another incident. But either way, Mike Dean came on and said... Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, this, this, you know, this is a difficult decision, this. And then two seconds later, VAR came in 
and came with their decision. And then he flip-flopped immediately to back far. And I was sitting here going, did I just hear that right? This absolute spanner has come on, given an opinion, and then changed that opinion instantaneously to agree with that and said, oh, yeah, nailed on, right decision. Like, they've just got no fucking integrity, any of them. Like, how do you go about giving Mike Dean a job? Can you answer that for me? Because he's supposed to be there explaining the virtues of refereeing when he's also there admitting he didn't do his fucking job. I don't get, like, the hypocrisy of Sky is never-ending. Do the right thing. Like, kick out racism. You know, make football all-inclusive and all the right stuff. Yeah, fair enough. That's all brilliant and we all agree with it. But also, stop being hypocrites. He does it over and over again. Over and over again, I'm listening to this absolute gum bean talking about uh, his opinion. Like, you don't, you've no credibility. Zero. You admitted you didn't do your job. You should have been fucking fined and sacked, not given another cushy job. Uh, Bruno Fernandez is the biggest diver on the planet, but Neville never jumps on his back. I know. It's mad. You know, look, there's more to this as well. Like, Salah, simulation. Harry Kane, clever. I don't need to tell you what the context or the subtext is there. But Harry Kane simulation, clever, good boy. Mohamed Salah, bad boy. Bad boy. Bad mo. Cheating. Simulation. Why is that? Uh, David, and thank you, David, for your very, very kind super chat, mate. Appreciate you. Said, Craig, what I don't understand, bro, is how Sky Sports and all the pundits are shocked if we win the Premier League when we have players that have won the lot. We keep being underestimated in this respect to David, in my opinion, by a lot of the uh, Sky media. Um, but let them, you know. What they can't do is influence what we do on the pitch. And if we keep picking up the results, you know, let them keep talking about others. If we can go about our business and get to where we want to be. You know, my goal has always been beat the points for last season. Arna said it himself, and that's what I've set him the task of. In my mind, is beating those 82 or 83 points that we got last season. If he does that, I don't think we're going to be far off uh, where we want to be. Now, what I don't know is still trying to figure out what wins the league this year points-wise. Um, what about, like, if I said to you guys right now, give me a points number that you think realistically, we can get and wins the league. Because I don't know what the measuring stick's going to be this year. Right, so, going through some of your numbers. Uh, Paul is the first one I can see there. It's at 88. Uh, Mark goes 87. Ryan, 86. KM, 2005 games. 90 plus. 90 for Adam. 84 for Tanya. Uh, Pro, 89. Uh, Zcad, 85 to 87. 88. Uh, Ian McCartney, no, that's a different one, sorry. Uh, Cape or Cop 09, 88. So, yeah, if I'm reading you guys correctly, it certainly feels like 87 to 92, somewhere in that bracket, feels like the um, 